giant AstraZeneca rejects claims its experimental COVID-19 vaccine may be fast-tracked in the U.S. amid reports Donald Trump wants to get it approved before the election White House insiders claim Trump may speed up regulatory approval for the jab. Getting a vaccine into use could slow down the U.S.'s devastating COVID-19 crisis therefore, it may help boost Trump's chances of getting re-elected in November but AstraZeneca has said it is not in talks about getting it fast-tracked in the U.S. The British-based firm said it would be premature to speculate on that possibility by Stephen Matthews health editor and Sam Blanchard senior health reporter for Mail Online published, 8.45 BST, the 25th of August 2020, updated, 13.54 BST, the 25th of August 2020 pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca has dismissed claims its experimental COVID-19 vaccine could be fast-tracked in the U.S. amid reports Donald Trump Trump wants to get it approved before the presidential election this autumn. White House insiders claim the U.S. president is considering speeding up regulatory approval for the jab, originally developed by Oxford University scientists. Getting a vaccine into use and slowing down the U.S.'s devastating coronavirus crisis, the worst in the world could boost Trump's chances of becoming re-elected in November, when he runs against Democratic candidate Joe Biden, who accused him of having failed to protect us apostrophe. But AstraZeneca, which oversees manufacturing and distribution of the jab, said it has not entered any talks about getting it an emergency use authorization in the US. It added that it would be premature to speculate on that possibility apostrophe. It comes after number 10 yesterday insisted Britain will be the first to get the COVID-19 vaccine, if it is proven to work. The UK has already bought 100 million doses of the jab, while the US has ordered 300 million. Early trials have shown promising results, with tests showing the vaccine is safe to use in humans and appears to provoke an immune response. But data that proves it protects people is not expected until later this year. The only country in the world to have approved a vaccine against COVID-19 so far is Russia. But it came under fire for doing so without proper clinical trials. Risks of using jabs that have not been tested thoroughly include damaging side effects or administering one that doesn't really work. If something goes wrong with an official vaccine, it could further dent already fragile public faith in vaccinations. U.S. President Donald Trump has watched his country gripped by one of the worst COVID-19 crises in the world with more than 5.7 million officially confirmed cases of the disease AstraZeneca, which claims it can manufacture 2 billion doses and already operates several facilities in America, denied that it has had discussions with the U.S. about an early deal. A spokesperson for the Brentford-based firm said, AstraZeneca has not discussed emergency use authorization with the U.S. government and it would be premature to speculate on that possibility. Late stage phase 2 3 trials for AZD 1222 are ongoing in the UK and other markets globally, and we do not anticipate efficacy results until later this year. Professor Andrew Pollard, director of the Oxford Vaccine Group, told BBC Radio 4's Today programme, emergency use authorizations are well established by regulators both in the US and Europe. In fact you may be aware this week the FDA has granted emergency use of plasma therapy. So the process of going through emergency use authorization in an emergency is well established. But it still involves having carefully conducted data, just as we are collecting information about the vaccines in clinical trials that are conducted rigorously evidence that it actually works. The trial we are running from Oxford, we would expect to have safety data and evidence the vaccine actually works before anything were to progress from there. And of course it would be AstraZeneca that would take it to regulators. He added that it is just possible that there may be enough clinical trial data on Oxford University's COVID-19 vaccine to put before regulators this year. The comments come after England's chief medical officer Professor Chris Whitty said a vaccine for coronavirus may not be ready until next winter. Professor Pollard said, 
I think that Chris Whitty is quite rightly being cautious, but it could take as long as that to first of all to demonstrate a vaccine works and is safe and then to go through the processes of regulators looking at that very carefully to make sure everything's been done correctly. But it is also just possible that if the cases accrue rapidly in the clinical trials that we could have that data to put before regulators this year, and then there would be a process that they go through in order to make a full assessment of the data. On the news that Mr. Trump was considering fast tracking the vaccine, one of the UK's top medical officers yesterday warned that there should be fair distribution of any working jab and that richer countries should not hoover up all the supplies. In a thinly veiled dig at President Trump, the World Health Organization's boss said a global rollout of a coronavirus vaccine was in the interests of all countries. Dr. Tedros Adhanom warned that vaccine nationalism may cause prices to spike and lead to a prolonged pandemic because poorer countries would be priced out of a jab. Pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca, pictured, a chemist at its HQ in Sydney, Australia, is already manufacturing the vaccine developed by Oxford University so that millions of doses will be ready if it is proven to work. AstraZeneca, which claims it can manufacture 2 billion doses and already operates several facilities in America, denied that. It has had discussions with the US about an early deal. Australia buys Oxford vaccine, but experts warn against rushing Australian. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has locked in a deal with pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca to secure a potential coronavirus vaccine, if its Oxford University Phase 3 trials prove successful. But doctors have warned a coronavirus vaccine may create dangerous side effects and argued against a no-jab, no-play policy. Vaccine development is typically a long and complex process that can take up to 15 years. Because of the urgency of the coronavirus pandemic, researchers are fast-tracking their testing, hoping to produce a safe and effective inoculation by next year. Australian Medical Association President Omar Khorshid said even positive Phase 3 trials, mass testing on members of the public, would not prove the vaccine candidate is safe. We have to acknowledge it is a rushed approval process and even if the Phase 3 trials on this Oxford vaccine go really well, it's still not absolutely proven that it is safe, not as proven as is normally the case, he told the Age newspaper. That does increase the risk that there might be rare side effects that we just don't know about. Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, CIRO, has been involved in fast-tracking the testing of the Oxford University candidate vaccine. In May, the CIRO said it was already at the stage of pre-clinical trials, a position that typically takes up to two years to reach. Dr. Korshid said it was expected the Oxford coronavirus vaccine would only be approved for adults in Australia at first. He said the Australian government's proposal of forcing people to take the AstraZeneca vaccine by tying it to services such as childcare, school or social security payments could not be justified because it had been rushed through clinical trials. Mr. Morrison has said he wants to make an approved vaccine as mandatory as possible, but it is not going to be compulsory. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Nick Coatsworth said possible punishments for unvaccinated people could include not being able to go to restaurants, travel internationally or catch public transport. Monash University Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences Professor Colin Putong told The Age it was important that people should have the right to refuse. University of London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine Professor Heidi Larson said it was precisely the no-jab, no-play policies that had sparked the anti-vaccination movement worldwide. Advertisement Mr. Drum has already vented his frustration at the slow process of getting a vaccine, accusing officials at the Food and Drug Administration FDA, of deliberately delaying evaluations until the election is over. He did announce significant progress yesterday, however, when he confirmed that U.S. hospitals could now use blood plasma from recovered COVID-19 patients as an emergency treatment, claiming that it could reduce the risk of death by a third. The president's best hope for getting the jab used before clinical trials have finished would be to get authorization for emergency use from the FDA. 
This is the course of action people briefed on the situation said he is considering taking, the Financial Times reported. Emergency use authorization allows officials to push through out medical products without proper testing because there is a clear immediate need for them. It has already been used during the COVID-19 crisis for drugs including the antiviral medication Remdesivir, which scientists suggested could reduce the risk of death. If emergency use were to be granted for the vaccine, it could mean it being pushed out after trials on only 10,000 people even though the FDA standard is for 30,000 people or more. Large trials are underway in Britain and around the world, but results are not expected for months to come. But approval for the jab could be made as soon as September, according to an FT source briefed on a meeting between U.S. politicians, chief of staff at the White House, Mark Meadows, and the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin, reportedly confirmed the plan to Democrats at the end of July. Senior Democratic politician Nancy Pelosi, allegedly warned the government against cutting corners apostrophe. Top officials have said they would not stand for it if Mr. Trump forced through the vaccine without data to prove it was safe. Dr. Peter Marks, director of the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research within the FDA, said he would resign if it happened and the Assistant Secretary for the U.S. Health and Human Services Department, Michael Caputo, denied that emergency use authorization would be given. Mr. Caputo, who was a member of Donald Trump's campaign team in 2016, said, irresponsible talk of an unsafe or ineffective vaccine being approved for public use is designed to undermine the president's coronavirus response, the FD reported, commenting on the prospect of the vaccine being fast-tracked in the U.S. England's deputy chief medical officer Dr. Jenny Harris said that everyone around the globe should have fair and safe access to vaccine development apostrophe. Dr. Harris told Sky News, we have a global crisis. It is really important that everyone around the world has fair and safe access to vaccine development. Obviously those countries which are more developed have the facilities to develop the vaccine and get it safely out to their populations. But I think all public health colleagues would be wanting fair distribution. Boris Johnson's office insisted that Britons would not lose out on the jab to other countries. His official spokesman said today, AstraZeneca have entered into a number of agreements with other countries. They have the global licensing agreement with Oxford, but we have been clear, once it has been found to be effective, we have signed a deal for 100 million doses which means that once it is effective the UK will get first access. Boris Johnson's official spokesman said today that people in Britain would be the first in the world to receive Oxford University's COVID-19 vaccine if it is proven to work, pictured, the Prime Minister at the National Memorial Arboretum in England this month, global vaccine programme in the interests of all countries, WHO says a globally coordinated rollout of a coronavirus vaccine will be in the interests of all countries, the World Health Organization's WHO, Director General has said in a thinly veiled dig at President Trump, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus warned against vaccine nationalism and said competition between rich nations may lead to prices spiking exponentially, which would only prolong the virus. Instead, he urged countries to support the COVAX vaccines facility, which has the largest and most diverse COVID-19 vaccine portfolio in the world. He told a WHO press briefing that 172 countries were engaging with the mechanism, which aims to deliver at least 2 billion vaccine doses by the end of 2021. The US is not involved, Dr. Tedros said, we are working with vaccine manufacturers to provide all countries that join the efforts timely and equitable access to all vaccines, licensed and approved. This doesn't just pool risk, it also means that prices will be kept as low as possible. New research outlines that global competition for vaccine doses could lead to prices spiking exponentially in comparison to collaborative efforts, such as the COVAX facility. It would also lead to a prolonged pandemic as only a small number of countries would get most of the supply. 
Vaccine nationalism only helps the virus. Nine vaccines are currently part of the COVAX portfolio, while discussions were ongoing with four other producers, Dr. Tedros said. Advertisement The US has been one of the worst hit countries in the world during the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 5.7 million cases have been officially diagnosed and at least 176,808 people have died, according to Johns Hopkins University, which has kept a track on the pandemic since it began in December. President Trump has been accused of mishandling the crisis and refusing to face up to his government's mistakes, shifting the blame to others and disputing statistics. Last week the president lashed out at the FDA and accused them of dragging out the process of getting a vaccine ready to go. He said in a tweet, the deep state, or whoever, over at the FDA is making it very difficult for drug companies to get people in order to test the vaccines and therapeutics. Obviously, they are hoping to delay the answer until after November 3rd must focus on speed, and saving lives. The only country to have officially approved a coronavirus vaccine is Russia but the circumstances around it have drawn harsh criticism from scientists. The jab, given to President Vladimir Putin's own daughter, was reportedly tested on fewer than 40 people before being officially approved. One scientist blasted Putin's move as unethical because an improperly tested vaccine could have disastrous effects on public health. While others warn that there is no data to tell whether the Russian vaccine is effective. Another expert warned that the damage from release of any vaccine that was less than safe and effective would exacerbate our current problems insurmountably. Apostrophe. One expert in Britain said it was disturbing that world leaders might fast track vaccines or force them through without proper safety testing in order to make political gains. Professor Danny Altman, an immunology expert at Imperial College London, said, It should be incredibly disturbing to the global medical community to see any potential attempts by any politicians, whether in Russia, the US or elsewhere, to seek to manipulate, short-circuit, or exert influence in any way over the agreed scientific protocols that are in place to carefully evaluate comparative safety, immunogenicity and efficacy of vaccines. In decades to come, we won't remember which politician polled a few more or less votes. The Oxford University jab is being trialled in the UK but also in other countries such as Brazil and South Africa because they have more cases of COVID-19 than Britain does so it will be easier to test. Pictured, a trial participant in South Africa received the jab but we really won't forget any failed opportunities to put in place the safest most effective possible global programs to eradicate this pandemic. Which countries have ordered Oxford's vaccine already? UK The UK is the host of research and development efforts of the vaccine, which has been developed by researchers in Oxford and will be manufactured by AstraZeneca, a company based in Cambridge. The British government has ordered 100 million doses of the jab and has already started manufacturing them so they're ready to go if and when clinical trials are successful. The price paid has not been disclosed. US The US government has ordered 100 million doses of the vaccine and contributed $1.2 billion, 910 million pounds, to the research and development of the jab. European Union, EU The European Commission has agreed a deal for 300 million doses of the vaccine if its clinical trials work, with the option to buy a further 100 million. The deal has been made on behalf of countries in the EU. The amount of money spent is unknown. Australia Australia has confirmed it ordered enough doses of the vaccine to give one to its entire population of 25 million people. It is not clear how many doses the nation has ordered. The UK, with a population of 66 metres but an order of 100 metres, ordered more than it needs. 
China One company in China has agreed a deal with AstraZeneca to make at least 100 million doses of the vaccine. Shenzhen Kantai Biological Products, based in the city of Shenzhen, will increase capacity to 200 meters per year by the end of 2021. Russia, a Russian company, Arfam, also has a deal to produce and distribute the vaccine, but it is unclear how many it will make or what it will pay to AstraZeneca. Brazil Brazilian officials have set aside $360 million, £274 million, pounds, for at least 100 million doses of the vaccine. Brazil is currently in one of the worst COVID-19 crises in the world with more than 3.6 million official cases so far and 114,000 deaths. Advertisement While small trials can show whether a vaccine is likely to be safe, the months or years long phase 3 tests which measure effectiveness have not yet taken place, while the WHO has not yet granted approval for the jab. Oxford University's vaccine, which is being developed with the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca, is now in phase 3 trials in the UK and Brazil. In these tests the vaccine is being given to tens of thousands of people in real-world environments to see if it protects them from COVID-19. It is the most advanced coronavirus vaccine trial in the world. Professor Sarah Gilbert, who is leading the Oxford team, is confident the jab could be ready for the most vulnerable people in society by the end of the year. The team have genetically engineered a virus to look like the coronavirus, that have the same spike proteins on the outside, but be unable to cause any infection inside a person. This virus, weakened by genetic engineering, is a type of virus called an adenovirus, the same as those which cause common colds that has been taken from chimpanzees. The UK government is not expected to start using the jab until large trials have proved it is safe. Professor Chris Whitty, England's chief medical officer, said on Saturday it would be foolish to assume a vaccine would be ready before 2021. Professor Whitty said, I would obviously be delighted if it came earlier rather than later but I'd be quite surprised if we had a highly effective vaccine ready for mass use in a large percentage of the population before the end of winter, certainly before this side of Christmas. Now that may be wrong, a lot of people are doing a huge amount scientifically, logistically to make sure Sure that's a pessimistic statement, to try and see if we can get a vaccine at extraordinarily fast speed but we have to check it works and we have to make sure it's safe and these things do take time. So I think if we look forward a year I think the chances are much greater than if we look forward six months and we need to have that sort of time scale in mind. It comes as the World Health Organization's WHO Director General said a globally coordinated rollout of a coronavirus vaccine will be in the interest of all countries apostrophe. Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus warned against vaccine nationalism and said competition may lead to prices spiking exponentially, which would only prolong the virus. Instead, he urged countries to support the COVAX vaccines facility, which has the largest and most diverse COVID-19 vaccine portfolio in the world. He told a WHO press briefing that 172 countries were engaging with the mechanism, which aims to deliver at least 2 billion vaccine doses by the end of 2021. Dr. Tedros said, We are working with vaccine manufacturers to provide all countries that join the effort timely and equitable access to all vaccines, licensed and approved. This doesn't just pool risk, it also means that prices will be kept as low as possible. New research outlines that global competition for vaccine doses could lead to prices spiking exponentially in comparison to collaborative efforts, such as the COVAX facility. It would also lead to a prolonged pandemic as only a small number of countries would get most of the supply. Vaccine nationalism only helps the virus. Nine vaccines are currently part of the COVAX portfolio, while discussions were ongoing with four other producers, Dr. Tedros said. Which top vaccine candidates have the UK secured deals for? 1. 
GlaxoSmithKline and Sanofi Pasteur, 60 million doses the government revealed on July 29 it had signed a deal with pharmaceutical giants GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, and Sanofi Pasteur if the vaccine proves successful, the UK could begin to vaccinate priority groups, such as frontline health and social care workers and those at increased risk from coronavirus. As early as the first half of next year, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy BEIS, said, human clinical studies of the vaccine will begin in September followed by a phase 3 study in December. The vaccine is based on the existing technology used to produce Sanofi's seasonal flu vaccine. Genetic material from the surface protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is inserted into insect cells, the basis of Sanofi's influenza product, and then injected to provoke an immune response in a human patient. 2. AstraZeneca, Manufacturing University of Oxford's 100 million AstraZeneca, which is working in partnership with Oxford University is already manufacturing the experimental vaccine after a deal was struck on May 17. Professor Sarah Gilbert, who is leading the Oxford team, is confident the jab could be ready for the most vulnerable people by the end of the year. Her comments came after the results from the first phase, published in The Lancet on July 20, showed promise. The team have genetically engineered a virus to look like the coronavirus, to have the same spike proteins on the outside, but be unable to cause any infection inside a person. This virus, weakened by genetic engineering, is a type of virus called an adenovirus, the same as those which cause common colds, that has been taken from chimpanzees. 3. BioNTech slash Pfizer, 30 million US drug giant Pfizer, most famous for making Viagra, and German firm BioNTech were revealed to have secured a deal with the UK government on July 20. It reported positive results from the ongoing Phase 2 thirds clinical trial of one called BNT 162B1 on July 1. The company is still running Phase 2 trials at the moment. Pfizer's vaccine is one called an mRNA vaccine, which do not directly inject bits of the virus into the body but send genetic material. mRNA vaccines program the body to produce parts of the virus itself by injecting the body with a molecule that tells disease-fighting cells what to build. The immune system then learns how to fight it. For Valneva 60 million the government has given Valneva, whose vaccine is understood to be in the pre-clinical stages of development, an undisclosed amount of money to expand its factory in Livingston, Scotland. While the government revealed a 60 million dose deal on July 20, the company said it had reached agreement in principle with the UK government to provide up to 100 million doses. Valneva's jab is an inactivated whole virus va Show your love for him. Click the link in description. Thanks for watching.